Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'll be showing you how to make your swap partition larger. I'll launch a terminal first, and inside that terminal, you can first make sure you have gparted installed by doing sudo space apt space install and then space gparted. Put your password in, and I already have mine installed. Yours might go through and install gparted. In order to run gparted, you just type gparted and press enter. You'll be asked for your administrative password. Go ahead and put it in and then gparted will launch. gparted is a great disk utility and I'll be using it today in order to expand the swap space here in this Ubuntu Linux distribution. Now you could be doing this on another Linux distribution. gparted is available on almost all distributions and it's a great tool to know how to use. I'm currently on the actual Linux system where I want to change up the swap partition on, and I currently have two gigs of swap space. I can make sure that that swap space is enabled by going back to the terminal, and if I type in free, I'll see how much space is currently freed and available to use. We can see that I have a two gig swap right here called Linux swap, and it has a flag of swap. So this is what I wanna make larger. Some older Linux distributions still use Linux swap partitions instead of swap files, unlike most new Linux distributions. So if you have this and you want to make your swap file larger, what we'll have to do is make the root file system, this 116 gigs I have available, smaller, so we can also make our Linux swap larger. So we'll have to move things around, or if you have the availability behind your swap to extend it, you can do that as well. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. So there is a little issue here, and that issue is that we're currently on the actual file system. Therefore, it means that this dev SDA2 is currently mounted and being used. So that means I can't make any changes to this root file system. If I right click and I hit resize or move, I can't actually make any types of edits to this. What we need to do instead is use a live disk with whatever favorite Linux distribution you like using that has live system capability, meaning you can just put your USB in and start using the environment before even installing it. I'll use Ubuntu itself in order to boot into a live image. I can do that fairly easily by creating a brand new bootable disk. If I go to ubuntu.com, I go to the download section, I'll just download the Ubuntu desktop real quick, and then using this, I will make a live disk. Today, I'll be using Belena Etcher in order to flash my drive, so I can use that live disk, and you can get it at belena.io. I'll put a link in the description below. They have versions for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS if you want to use this. You can also use any other bootable disk creator, such as Rufus or Unibootin. All right, I can launch my Belena Etcher application, and from here, I will select Select the file I just got done downloading. So my Ubuntu 20.04 desktop AMD64 image. Of course, if you're using some other Linux distribution to create your live disk and you know what you're doing already, you can skip right through this and move on to the part where we use the live image. All right, I'm selecting a target and I currently have this verbatim store and go. So I'm selecting that since that's the USB CD or DVD where I want to install my Ubuntu live image onto. And I know this is correct because I know it's a 32 gig USB and I don't currently have anything else plugged in. So make sure you select the proper one because all the contents on that disk will be erased in order to put this live image onto it. I'm going to hit select and then I can start my flash by simply hitting flash. I'll put my password in to give this program administrative privileges and let it begin the flashing process. Give it a few moments, and then we will be rebooting the computer and booting into BIOS so we can select this live disk from our boot order. All right, and after the flash is complete here, it will tell you on the program, and you can exit out at this point. Now, if you're having a little bit of trouble following along, you can watch one of my other videos where I go through this slower in more depth and with your choice of a Linux distribution, 
to create a live bootable disk. I'll put some links in the description below. Otherwise, you should be familiar with this process and you're probably ahead of me at this point anyway. All right, at this point, I'm ready to reboot my computer because I have that bootable disk created and I want to get into BIOS. All right, and on my computer, I have to hit the delete key or the F2 key in order to get to my BIOS. As you can see, I am now in my UEFI BIOS. Of course, yours might look a little bit different and it might be a different key to get in. What I'm interested in is the boot priority here. And I want to move my verbatim store and go USB, which I know is 32 gigs, to the top of my boot order in order for it to be the very first thing to get booted by the system. At this point, I can save and exit, but I'll go into the advanced mode. And in my advanced settings here, I can see that I have tabs up top, which I'm looking for something called boot or boot order. This is the other way to do it. Some of you might be more familiar with this. What I want to do is go down to my boot option number one and make sure that my verbatim store and go is the selected USB to boot first. As you can see, I currently do have that selected and yours might be a different name based on the USB that you're using, CD or DVD, but make sure to select the proper one. This is 32 gigs. I know it's the proper one. I'm pressing enter. And now I can save my changes by exiting out. If I go to the exit tab, I'll do save changes and reset in order to boot in to my Ubuntu live disk. All right, and if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. I have a few options here for my live disk, Ubuntu and Ubuntu safe graphics. Since I have an Nvidia graphics card in this computer, I'll be using the safe graphics method you can use the regular old Ubuntu method if you don't have some type of special graphics. All right, if I hit that, that should load me into the live image of Ubuntu here in a moment. All right, and for me, since I'm using Ubuntu, I'll get this dialog here. Of course, if you're using some other live image with some other Linux distribution, you might not get this and you might be directly in the live desktop environment. For me to get in, I have to hit Try Ubuntu and give it a few moments to load the desktop. And once the live desktop is loaded, I'll go to Activities and search for Terminal. In Terminal, we'll do much of the same. So sudo apt install, and we want gparted again. Press Enter. It says we already have it, so it's pre-installed for us. Great. And then we'll type gparted and let the program begin. Once gparted has opened up, you want to make sure you select the proper disk in the right hand corner, depending on which disk you want to edit and make the swap file larger on. Of course, you can have just one disk or perhaps two since you have a USB and your storage disk available at this point. But I know mine's dev SDA because it's the 128 gigabyte drive where I want to change up my swap file. So if I look at that, I have the root file partition followed by the swap partition here. And at the very beginning is my EFI partition. I'm interested in the Linux swap. So this swap file here at the end. So now I need to make this larger. In order to do so, I'll have to make my root file system smaller. Let's say I hit the resize button and now I'm able to actually drag this around and open up some space so that the end here is unallocated. What it shows you here is the yellow is currently used space. The white is currently unused space on this root file partition. Just make sure you don't slide anything left or right and make sure that this free space proceeding is always zero. So if I lower this, let's say I want to give about 14 more gigs to the already two gigs that I have. Now I have zero free space proceeding, new size, so my size went down for the root file partition, and free space following, I have about 14 gigs. So if I select resize and move, we shouldn't get any errors, and the beginning of our root file partition remains untouched. It might give you a warning if you mess something up. Do not execute any of the operations if there is something messed up because that can lead to a potential failure in your Linux operating system. All right, the next thing is we want to work with this Linux swap partition. So in order to do that, we have to right click on it and hit swap off. The major reason we had to use a live image was because 
our root file partition was mounted when we were actually using the system. And the best way and easiest way, in my opinion, is to just use a live image in order to make sure that your disk is not mounted and that you can access it and make various different disk operations on it without any errors. So now that I have this unallocated space and my swap off, and now I can right click and hit resize or move, or I can even delete it and recreate the swap. Whatever you're more comfortable with, I'll just delete it, right click on it, create new, just to show you how to. Now I'm using the full 16 gigs that I have or whatever it can align to in megabytes. And I'm creating a primary partition with the file system of Linux swap. You'll want to make sure that your file system is of Linux swap type or else it may not work. You can put in a label if you'd like. If you wanna call it swap or something, that's fine too. And then you can hit add. Following that, you can now apply all operations. Again, just verify that you did things properly or else you can mess up your disk partition. You don't ever want to mess with the yellow section or move things up because then you'll be losing any data up here at the top of the sector for this disk. Anyways, I'm confident I got things correct and I'm going to hit apply. This will now erase some of the open space so it's unallocated at the end of the root file partition and recreate a new partition of Linux swap type. So I'm looking through, is everything turning out correct? Looks like it is. We have SDA1, still the EFI partition, SDA2, our Linux root file partition of ext4 file system. Then the dev SDA3 Linux swap with a flag for swap. Finally, the last thing we need to do is right click and hit the swap on. This will turn your swap on so the system recognizes it as swap on your next boot into the actual Linux system. And if you're still following along, make sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. All right, so now we are done with our Gparted disk utility tool. We can now exit out. We have our new swap partition allocated, about 16 gigs. We have our root file system partition still intact and we're ready to exit out and exit out of here and get out of our live image. We can do that by just rebooting the system and loading back into our BIOS where we can reset the priority so that our hard drive is first to boot instead. All right, I'm restarting. And here I'm asked to remove my install medium. You can do this and press enter if you want or keep it in, whatever you want. Again, I'll boot into my BIOS by hitting one of the F keys and I'll make sure that my boot priority is correct again by moving up my Ubuntu disk to be the first to boot. I'll save and exit. I'll load into my Ubuntu system. All right, and once the system is booted back in and you're on your Linux distribution, let's check and make sure through terminal by running gparted again that we have our swap partition. So here we go. Now with the actual system booted up and we can tell because now if I try to resize or move, I can't do it anymore, it's mounted. I see that we have our roof file system and it looks like this SDA3 needs to have the swap turned on. So again, if you right click on the swap and you hit swap on or off, that'll turn the swap on or off. I thought I did this earlier, but maybe I forgot. Either way, just make sure that you have your swap available in your actual system. And now back in the terminal, just to make sure that things have been expanded as far as the swap partition goes, we can type in free. What free does is it tells us the free amount of space that we have for both memory, physically, and swap locally to our disk. It says that we have about 18 gigs freed up right now, zero being used, of a total of 18. And why 18 when we use 16? That's because I have an extra swap file here as well. So if I do another command swap on, it tells me the name and type of swaps that I have here. I have one file, one partition. The partition has about 16 gigs. The file has about two gigs. But now you understand how to resize a Linux swap partition. Congratulations if you made it this far, you've successfully created a larger Linux swap file partition. If you need help with making your swap file larger, I do have a video on that as well. I'll make sure to post it in the description below. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. 
catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.